Hello, welcome or welcome back to TSC Talks weekly update number 20. One, two, three, four. That's 20. Can you believe it? I think it's 20. It might be 19. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. If you did uh, today on this live, this is how it's going to go down. I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes share what's going on with the podcasts uh, in the past and in the future, tell you a little health hack, and then I'm going to set it up so Lisa can come on and talk a little bit about the podcast that is currently airing. I just posted it today uh, regarding exceptional circumstances. So I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm going to go and I'm going to talk about the past podcast and the future podcast. So anyways, our past podcast with, with uh, Brooke Alicia where we discussed, uh, that was called the Tower of Babel, and we discussed tumor sclerosis related challenges, long-term case management related to social services, group home placement, and managing our own health, mental health, physical health, and sanity in a variety of ways. So you can check that out. Awesome, awesome human individual, Brooke. And uh, coming up, shortly i'm not sure who's going to be next because it kind of flows into the podcast but nikki lolly is this awesome another awesome human being i need some more um adjectives or something in my vernacular sorry about that uh nikki is a traumatic brain injury uh had a trip a traumatic brain injury on the job completely uh stopped her life on a dime and changed everything and her story back to mental health and physical health uh, still continues, but she discovered cannabis in her journey, and she's been on the podcast before. So we're going to catch up with Nikki, see what's happened in the time that we, uh, you know, since last year, and what she's doing now, and her exceptional circumstances, and how she makes it work. So you can look forward to that. Also, coming up after Lisa, sometime in the next few weeks, is Lisa. Hopefully, Lisa's mother is going to come on and give us a little bit more detail into the situation that went down at their house that we're going to talk about in just a minute. But before that, I want to give you the health hack for the week. I know I've been kind of ripping through these health hacks and sharing some tips and tricks for my personal repertoire of bucking the system and finding things outside the box that you might not have thought of. And the one I got today is uh, related to a supplement. And again, I'm going to say I am not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV. Ha ha. Anyways, um, I do use a lot of supplements, done a lot of research on it. So I'm going to talk to you about this supplement. And it's called ashwagandha. Ash, I think it's, it, or it's ashwagandha. ashwagandha. Anyways, I don't really know how to say it. This is just a sample bottle that I have that I use. I use it personally. I My kids uh, that are affected by TSC use it. It is a uh, traditional medicine of India. It's it's kind of got a horse, its roots have a horsey smell. So that's where the name comes from. Uh, it's said to give you the strength and virility of a horse. Now, I don't know about that, but anyways, uh, Various parts of the plants are used, but it's mostly an extract of the roots, and the benefits are incredible. You know, it's subtle, though, I will say. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I don't know, maybe I mixed it in with a bunch of other supplements so it wasn't, you know, highly distinguishable. But I will say, I did notice a, a mild to moderate decrease in, like, like stress, um, just something shifted a little, so I can't really put my finger on it, but I recommend it. My daughter, Sarah, who's on the podcast, she also noticed a difference. You know, she's she's got the TSC diagnosis, and she takes takes pharma, and she tried it and thought it comparable a little bit to 5-HTP. So another, another, blah, a, a number of studies suggest, oh, yeah, my background, by the way, I think, uh, yeah, representing the storm situation that occurred in the Northeast in the last few days. We, I am not outside, though maybe I should go outside after I talk all about the cold therapy, but I am inside with a background, so I hope you guys like it. And Ashgawada has anti-anxiety, anti-oxalytic effects, uh, supported mostly, uh, the research and everything has mostly supported that particular um, uh, effect, but also it does uh, reduce cortisol levels. I think that's what I would say, you know, like I felt a little something muted. So, and um, 
they're still doing research on it. Uh, it doesn't interact. I noticed the interaction profile with a lot of medications and other supplements is, you know, there are minimal interactions and that's a really good thing. It's an adaptogen, so it kind of gives you what you need. Uh, may increase power output during res uh, resistance exercise and anaerobic running. This, you know, like I'm saying, there's, there's some research out there. Actually, there's a lot of research. Uh, I'm just pulling from one particular source. So if we run out of time or if we have time at the end, I'll go and show you some of those sources. But I do want to set this up for Lisa to come on and explain to you what we're doing. So I said it was exceptional circumstances. That's the name of the theme. How do we make it work when the systems don't work? And, you know, I think everybody right now is dealing with some exceptional circumstances and trying to figure out how to make things work with all kinds of variables and um, that are at hand in our country and across the globe with the COVID and everything related to that. And, um, you know, we've got a new person in the White House. So anyways, uh, this problem that Lisa's going to talk about is probably also common. Now, not particularly related to TSC, but when you hear what Lisa talks about, I think you'll see the connection and how it is really helpful for, for all of us, especially as we get older and our parents get older, yada. So people find themselves uh, with un unimaginable circumstances when there's no options available and it's like choosing between a rock and a hard place. And that's something I've said repeatedly with, you know, dealing with a TSC diagnosis in our medical system is really a challenge. So... Uh, anyways, when there's no options available, uh, we're faced with situations that we never anticipated. And, you know, while many societal advancements and improvements has, have enabled us to live longer and longer, we're often faced with more chronic mental and physical health challenges, chronic diseases and autism, quality of life reducing issues, and our elderly and those with special needs, those who must depend on others to survive. Uh, are in many ways more at risk in our current uh, systems of care. So what we hope to do in this series is learn about several different exceptional circumstances and where decisions had to be made to either follow the systemic structure and the options available or somehow turn the situation around and make it work for us even if we're still dependent on certain aspects of it, demonstrating how we can minimize dependence on the more inhumane and nonsensical rules and regulations and find creative ways to make our circumstances work more to our advantage. So that is kind of setting the stage for um, what we're gonna talk about. And Lisa is here now, so I'm gonna admit her. Lisa, there you are. Hi. Hey. Hey, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Oh you know how much I love it. <laughs> I know. Lisa loves being on live. Oh, God, yeah. But, you know, getting loves talking. And, mm -hmm. But well, it's okay. It. Yeah. So I just read through my little description setting up the what we talked about. And, you know, in your own words, can you just give me a little, little, like, short summary of what, of what happened and what you did? Yeah, you know, um, my mom is almost 78. My stepfather is 86. And they, all, they both had a lot of health issues. He's been not doing very well. So she's pretty much been the full-time caretaker. And when she has health issues, then I've kind of stepped in and been the full-time full -time yep. caregiver. And um, we just were juggling that. I've lived with them. Uh, they've lived, you know, it just wasn't working well having them in a different house um, right. and their house wasn't handicapped accessible. My stepfather is going to be, need to be full-time in a wheelchair very soon, pretty much is now. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we needed a better option. Um, assisted living wasn't an option. Nursing home really wasn't an option. And suddenly we decided this was an option. It worked for all yeah. of us, you know, um, this house is kind of a heavy financial burden right now. Mm -hmm. So having someone else come in and help with it a little bit has been helpful and it's accessible because my husband is disabled. So it's worked out pretty well, but I have to say like, when you listen to my podcast, I think I kind of sound like a Pollyanna about the whole thing. And if I do, I don't mean to, <laughs> because it's just, it's not this easy for most people. We're really lucky. We know we are. So 
Well, I think, you, you know, you've had kind of a, a road to being, being prepared for it in a lot of ways. I mean, like you said, your right. husband's disabled, your house has some of the accommodations that, that might be needed or are needed. And, mm-hmm. you know, like mentally, like you said, they lived there before. And so you kind of had, yeah. had some background for it. But, um, you know, I think what I, I pulled out of it, well, I pulled a lot of things out of it, but it's just... Uh, you know, just the, the getting everybody to cooperate and to be, kind of be on the same page and uh, you managed to do that. And I know that, you know, everybody in your house, we're good friends and we talk a lot. Everybody doesn't always get along, you know. Oh, God, no. So, no. Um, yeah, just that, that piece that it was kind of a growing experience for everybody. And, you know, I'm sure there's still a lot of challenges, Lisa, and there will be. But... Um, I don't know. I guess what what has been the the biggest challenge? I think the biggest challenge has been that, you know, my kids are still here. Um, my daughter's at college. My son lives here. Um, and so I think the adjustment was bigger for them. Um, it was, you know, I mean, they're they're um, 20 and 23. So they're completely self-centered and really just want to do their own thing and not be bothered. And um, you know, there, there have been a few bumps, but they've been pretty good about getting through it. Um, we've all kind of tried to talk through it and, um, yeah, it's, you know, there've been bumps, but, um, it's been hard. My stepfather, um, uh, also has a bit of dementia and doesn't really get that, um, because of COVID, he can't be going out all the time and doing what oh. he wants to do. And he doesn't get like that. None of us are doing that really. And, um, he's feeling very trapped uh, so tell which me, is but... understand yeah exactly i mean i don't think there's a whole lot of people that aren't feeling that way it's winter and it's you know things are getting better here though so i've i've like eased the restrictions on everyone they're allowed to go out and do things That's good carefully you know so you're but, walking yeah. through it yeah and and you i guess you know you you're not going to know 100 percent what the future holds but um yeah the family do any of us do any of us no we freaking don't but you know yeah i know i know Um, so we'll just wait and see what happens well one thing i was going to say too is like with your kids i mean you've you've just been really open with them and work to have a good relationship and work to kind of like lisa is like the glue that's what i see or she you are the 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 one that's kind of like the rock oh thank you well um, that's Thank you. And that's kind of you to say as my friend, I can see why you'd say that. I think that it's not just me, you know, there's a lot and, and my kids have been pretty good. And I just check in with everyone a lot, Mm -hmm. (laughs) a lot, you know, but I mean, it's funny, like little things, you know, um, I fell and hurt myself. And yesterday, all day long, my mom was like, put ice on it. Rest. You're not going to work tomorrow, right? <laughs> so now you're you have take, your mother there. I call the doctor. Yeah. You know, now you have like, your mother there. <laughs> mom, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny. And, you know, I mean, my husband's a damn rock star. Who moves their mother-in-law in? You know? Really? But he did. And, and. And you know what, though? I would have, too, because he loves my mom like his mom. I loved his mom like my mom. We're really lucky. So, yeah, yeah. that's that's a big that's a big one. But, um, yeah, and I didn't mean to say I think it, what I also the takeaway was that everybody, everybody cooperated, everybody contributed, you know, like yeah. you, you definitely facilitated it. And I think it's funny because right before or not right before you were ready, Lisa was ready to downsize <laughs> and move out the exact opposite almost of what what happened <laughs> yep pretty much we were getting ready to move into an apartment. the house did you have it on the market no we never got that far okay. we talked to realtors um and just as we were about to list my husband went you know not so sure i'm ready for this oh look that's me remembering to come on the live Oh, well, so, thank you. Thanks so much for see, being on. One minute before it closes, and I guess that was my deadline. I don't know why it says now. I'm not good at the timer thing. Oh, that's all right. So. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I was going to play a clip, um, and then I will end. So okay. if you don't mind Sounds good. listening to a clip, I'm going to play a little clip. I mostly play these just to practice for myself, but <laughs> glad that everybody else can be here. Um, yeah, I just I got to share the screen. So let's see. This takes a minute. Uh, 
where are you? There it is. All right. And play. Is that financially, it's, it's been a stretch. It really has. I mean, the town we live in, taxes go up every year. It's, it's crazy. So we kind of, once we switched directions, we kind of had to figure out, okay, well, how do we make this work? Mm -hmm financially and in the meantime while i was packing us and downsizing us we had also downsized my husband's stepfather after his mom had passed away and then my brother-in-law passed away so we had downsized his stuff so we had now like we had cleared out That's our right. house ready to downsize and then suddenly had melded into other houses into our house and then during that time my mom my mom has had her own share of health issues mm -hmm her husband she's been a full-time caregiver for her husband now for the last several years she's 77 he's 86 so it's been a lot so i have actually over the last that yeah wow i hate talking but then once she starts me i know yeah so it's a great podcast i encourage you all to check it out especially if you're you know in a situation where this might be um, something that it could be helpful for you. So thanks, Lisa. Check out our website. We've just put a uh, donate button. If any of our work is helpful to you, you can go there and whoops, give us a little, give us a little love. Even though I know you guys all love us, so I'm going to stop talking once I get out of this. I think I just put my another video started playing in the background. All right, that's it. All right, see you next week, everybody. Thanks I... for tuning in. Oh, I got to end the live on the. On the live. Oh my god. And there we go. Oh my god.